elected office, but we want somebody who's going to give uh, uh, a kind of sensitive, a kind of, uh, of uh, statesman, statesman-like leadership during this time of crisis, instead of taking sides with uh, anti-busing groups and advocating anti-busing and resegregating, or as he puts it, one-race schools. And this is contrast to what NAACP has been working for for, for 60-some years. These men may look like GIs training for parachute jumping, but actually they're Dallas firemen learning how to rescue and give medical aid to trap victims. It's just part of the training program preparing firemen to run an emergency ambulance service when the city takes over the operation in November. For two weeks now, 40 firemen have been studying and practicing to complete the month-long course that will certify them as emergency medical technicians. But this week at the fire department training school, they practice extrication techniques. In other words, how to remove persons from cave-ins, tall buildings, and automobile wrecks. I talked to Chief Bill Roberts about their training. Chief, what is the purpose of this exercise? What are they learning to do right here? Well, this particular operation, they're learning how to take people down from building if, there's, if they can't come straight down through the stairwells and so forth, like there may be fire below them. It's um, also intended to provide you with a means of bringing somebody down in a stable condition where they don't, there's no movement involved in the patient's body. The real intent of the whole thing is if, um, if a patient is not uh, killed by the impact of any kind of accident, well, we intend to uh, keep them alive throughout the whole process till we can get them into a hospital. Chief, this looks like a real-life situation of what would actually happen in a wreck. Well, yes, Martha, it's, it's rather typical. You know, you see these kind of wrecks all the time, and uh, this is exactly the way that we're going to be taking people out of them. It may not be the fastest way, but uh, at least the patient will be in much better condition than what uh, is typical. What are your men learning to do right now? Well, they're learning how to uh, basically extricate people from automobile accidents in this particular phase. Are they learning to treat them medically or what? Oh, yes, yes. Our, our intent is to uh, stabilize the people as much as we can before we take them out of the car. And this will mean uh, splinting, uh, broken bones, uh, stopping bleeding and establishing breathing and this sort of thing. This is the first time the fire department has trained its men with an emphasis on immediate medical aid. So by the time the fire department starts its ambulance service in November, 200 firemen will be qualified as emergency medical technicians. Martha McIntyre, Channel 8 News on the Move at the Fire Department Training School in Dallas. That's another example of the kind of campaign tactics that uh, I think we can expect from Senator Connolly. I think we can uh, expect the, uh, uh, the, the, the bitterness and the falsehood uh, generated in his campaign uh, to increase in the next two weeks. Would you consider yourself, what, a conservative? I, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm a businessman. I'm president of a medium-sized corporation with over a thousand employees. Uh, my whole approach to government or to business or anything that, or, or anything in life is, is that of, of solving the problems.
Well, Jerry, yes. Uh, five years ago when the tornado began, we talked in terms of playing Glasgow Celtic or Santos of Brazil or Moscow Dynamo. And so now the day is coming when we're going to play a Russian team, Moscow Dynamo, the number one team in Russia. And uh, they'll be at Texas Stadium June. Seventh, it's a night game, eight o'clock, and the ticket prices are the same as regular season. And uh, we're very excited about it. Their their manager uh, is a fellow named Yashin, Y A S H I N, and uh, he unquestionably, in his time, he retired in 1971, was the number one goalkeeper in the world. And uh, their team represents a championship team from one of the top soccer powers in the world. Well, the, the negotiations were uh, unusual, to, to say the least. You don't just uh, pick up the phone and call these people, nor do like uh, President Nixon just go directly to them. So in arranging our soccer summit between uh, the champion Russian team and the champion North American Soccer League, Dallas Tornado, we had to go through an intermediary, a third party, who happened to be a Swede who lives in Portugal. So uh, negotiations have transpired over a period of a little over two months and uh, finally reached the point where contracts have been signed and uh, we're ready to go. This takes on sort of a goldfinger appearance. <laughs> Who is the sweet? Maybe he could help our rural I, I, problems. I'm sorry, I, I don't know the man's name, but uh, he might, uh, might be a good move to put him in our State Department, huh? The Dynamo presents a formidable opponent then for the tornado, do they not? Uh, no question, uh, the most formidable in our history. The uh, Dynamo Moscow team that will come here to Dallas on uh, June the 7th is a very famous team. They have been, uh, in its 50 year of existence, they've been national champions in uh, the Soviet Union for 10 times. They uh, have also been the uh, showcase team for uh, the Soviet Union. After the war, they, took, they undertook a, a famous tour that broke down many international barriers after the war and they were very uh, successful as far as defeating the English teams. Also, they undertook a tour, the first tour of a Russian team uh, to South America, and also they uh, went undefeated in, uh, in their games in, in that part of the world. Uh, we're both number one in our respective countries, Jerry, but of course uh, soccer is so much bigger in, in, uh, in Russia that they, they have to be uh, expected to beat us, but uh, we'll be the underdogs, you know. But um, I know that uh, when we play these uh, these Ruskies, that um, my boys will be losing six or seven pounds of sweat out there. As I anticipated in a report some weeks ago, David Payton has been retained as director of the CAA for another six-month probationary period. The reason apparently is that a new board of directors takes over in November and the current board has passed on to their successors the right to choose the director they'll work with. It should be said to the credit of the board that they are working in harmony these days, although there is some question in concerned circles whether the board may be using harmony as its only goal and may be ignoring in great measure the operation of the CAA. It should also be noted on the credit side of the ledger that David Payton, a highly opinionated, volatile, and outspoken young man by nature, is maintaining a super cool facade and an exceptionally low profile, even in the face of continued opposition from some board members. The board also agreed with Peyton's reinstatement of operating director Pete Herrera and other staff members who had been dismissed over alleged violations of the Hatch Act. Jerry Taff, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth.
removing patients from cave-ins. Do you feel like this, you, that these men will be prepared by November? Well, of course, the Texas delegation has always been, to a man, as far as I know, unanimously for the Trinity Project. It makes no difference whether you're from the north-central section of the state or the southern section of the state. It's going to benefit everyone, and particularly in terms of recreation and bringing environmental quality to more numbers of people. So I think they responded well. The committee itself responded well. Indeed, the chairman uh, probably showed a little bit more uh, leaning toward our way of thinking than uh, some chairmen have in the past. So to answer your question specifically, I think it was very favorable indeed. So you're very optimistic about getting the 32 some million dollars for the Trinity? Well now you know there were only two items that we presented before that committee which wasn't already budgeted by the administration. So one of those was a one million dollar project and one about a five hundred thousand dollar project as I remember it. Uh, maybe these two won't make it, maybe they will, but I believe the budgeted items have an excellent chance. The tradition of Thanksgiving has been in the heart of our Dallas community for more than 50 years. Dallas belongs to this tradition. The United States of America belongs to this tradition. The world will someday, as one, belong to this tradition. The city of Dallas is anxious to cooperate with the Thanksgiving Foundation that is making Thanksgiving Square possible for each and every one of us from every walk of life to enjoy. For our part, the city of Dallas pledges the Thanksgiving Square will not be delayed in breaking ground this year. The city administration will do everything possible to expedite city plans to meet the Thanksgiving Square construction schedule. We're happy at this moment of beginning today to have a part in creating this downtown place of celebration for a spirit of Thanksgiving that we share with all men everywhere.